What up, what up? Wimbush here. Now, recently, I've been working on this main title for this movie that's coming out later this year. And, you know, it's your typical high, big impact 3D type coming in from behind the camera. Simple enough. But the one thing is on the sides of the, the title there, it's really metallic, really reflective. And so I get a lot of fireflies slash noise whenever the title's moving back in the Z space. And so instead of messing around in Redshift, messing with the samples and whatnot, I found a good solution in After Effects using no third-party plugins. It's all right in AE, so let's get right into it and I'll show you how it's done. Now, since I can't show you guys the movie title that I'm working on, what I'm doing here is I'm recreating kind of what I did using my logo. Now, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough because I'm using metallic edges here. I'm using light reflections. I'm using big 3D type. And so the concept is the same. We're going to get the same results whenever we render this out. Now this right here, this is right out of After Effects. No type of degrain or anything added to it. As you can see, it's very noisy. And this playback here, you can see it's all really cleaned up here. All right, to get started. So we're in After Effects here. I have all my stuff built out, as you saw in the time lapse there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a layer that has the metallic reflections here on the side. So I'm going to go down to my layer nine, I believe. Yeah, so that's the one that I have matted out for the sides. And what I'm going to do is going to effects and presets, type in grain. And then we have this plugin called remove grain, which is built into After Effects. So I'm just going to drag it over to my layer number nine here. And then you can see over here in our attributes window, it pops up here and our preview mode right now says preview and that's what this white box is right here and that's because this plugin is so intense that it's going to be hard to do ram previews on it and um basically they give you a square here just so you can kind of select the region if you want to preview it but what i like to do is i go to preview mode and go to final output and that way i can see what it's going to do across the board even though it's going to make playback a lot slower I kind of just like seeing what it's going to look like when it's finally out and it softened it up a little bit. Let me come over here where there's really a lot of noise. So if I flicker between the two, you can see a real subtle difference. And when you render it out with just that, with the default, you're still going to get a lot of noise. Now the trick to it is go down here where it says temporal flickering. You want to enable that and then that really softens it up. Now I'll click it off. Then I'll click it back on. You can see the difference there. Now, the only issue with that is basically it is softening all the pixels. So depending on your scene, you want to come down here and play with the amount percentage. I'm going to just leave it at default 100. But sometimes you'll want to kick it down because you'll lose a lot of detail in there if you have it higher than 100% or sometimes even 100%. Just depends on your scene and your lighting and everything. And so I'm going to unsolo my layer there. And I can still see a lot of noise here. And that's because when I rendered out a redshift, I also rendered out a reflection layer right here, as you can see in number six. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add remove grain to my reflection layer, go to preview mode, final output. And then I'm going to go to my temporal flickering enable. And you can see it softened it. Let me click on and off. Let me zoom out a little bit. Might be able to see it better this way, hopefully. So if I click on and off, hopefully you can see that difference with the YouTube compression, but believe me, it's there and that's all there is to it. It cleans it up a lot. This is how I overcame the issue when I was working on the, um, the movie there. And I wanted to show you this because this is one of the kickbacks with using that. If I go down to my render queue, when I was rendering it out, I rendered it without the remove grain and that took only about 20 minutes. But once I added the remove grain to there, that render took about an hour. So that's just something you want to keep in mind whenever you're using this. I know there might be better third party plugins, but the remove grain actually comes in after effects. So if that's all you have to work with, I mean, it's still a good solution. But just keep in mind that you're going to have that big jump in render times there. 
and I have a pretty fast machine and it still took me about an hour or so just keep that in mind and yeah that's all we got for this one so of course if you like this tutorial and want to see more make sure to subscribe leave me a comment or leave me a message if you have any questions as always i've been answering all um all your questions that you guys have been sending so thank you for that and until next time stay designing <laughs>